This is Justin again for, with the Law for Teachers course. This is the follow-up on legal framework where we're specifically going to look at the courts. So we left off the last module talking about you and your classroom. Okay, so where I want to pick up here is what happens when things go wrong? Okay, the system is built on all these laws and when everything follows all the laws, it works beautifully and there's no problems. But sometimes things go wrong. And we have a system for that, luckily, called the courts. And so, you know, you're familiar with these things generally, these court buildings. If you go downtown Lexington, you see all of these buildings that are courtrooms downtown. And so these courtrooms handle a variety of legal controversies going all the way from the local level all the way up to the U.S. Supreme Court. So the way I want to do this is a little bit of true or false. And so I'll put some questions out there and I want you to think about them, whether or not they are true or false. And then I'll give you the answer. Okay, so here's the first question. The courts are only used by adults 18 and over and cannot be used by minors because they do not pay taxes to support them. So what do you think? Well, I would hope that you would think that's false, but here's why. So the courts are used by everyone in the country, whether or not they pay taxes, okay? So your students absolutely have a right to sue your school and potentially even you if their rights are violated. And how we determine this is like everything that touches U.S. soil. So hopefully that helps explain why Guantanamo Bay, Cuba exists for you, right? This place exists because it doesn't touch U.S. soil, meaning these people do not have access to the U.S. court system. But everything that touches U.S. soil does. Next question. So courts are always the first place a dispute goes. Right? That is also false. Um, turns out that there are actually systems that can precede the court system including administrative systems. And in the world of education, the special education world actually has a whole separate administrative structure before you can get to the court system. So it's important to keep in mind, sometimes you have to go through a regulatory system before you can even get to the judicial system. All right, next question. If there are no federal or constitutional questions, then a litigate would bring the action to state court. Have a quick look at that chart. So hopefully you came up with true uh, based on the chart. If you look at that chart, you can see when things affect the Constitution, they can go through the federal court system. But remember, our Constitution is a limited Constitution, limited to only those things that are inside of it, meaning that all other questions go directly to the state court and eventually can work their way up through the Court of Appeals, through the state Supreme Court, to the US Supreme Court. So there's a way to get there, but you have to start at the state level if it does not impact the Constitution. And keep in mind that the Constitution does not mention the word education, although it does mention lots of other things we'll talk about in this class, like religion and expression and search and seizure. So there are two federal district courts in Kentucky. It's the Sixth Circuit and the Fifth Circuit. So if you read quickly, <laughs> You'll see that they're actually, that's false. What we have is the Eastern and Western District Courts. And of course, the Western District sits in Louisville and the Eastern District sits in Lexington. There are actually some satellite offices around, but those are our two main branches of federal court in Kentucky. All right, next question. If you lose at the State Court of Appeals, you would then take your case to the State Circuit Court. Think back to that chart. No, surely you came up with false. You would go to the state Supreme Court, of course, and that is, of course, a picture of our state Supreme Court sitting at their chamber, which is in our state capitol building in Frankfurt. If you've not gotten a chance to check it out, please do. It's a wonderful building, beautiful, beautiful space, and our state court sits on one of the wings of that building. So next question, if your case happened in your classroom locally here in Kentucky, 
you would appeal your case to the Sixth Circuit Court of Appeals, which sits in Nashville. So you're looking at that map, hopefully you're seeing that, yep, Tennessee is in the Sixth Circuit. So maybe the Sixth Circuit sits in Nashville. Well, it's tricky because no, Nashville is not the home of the Sixth Circuit. We are absolutely in the Sixth Circuit Court of Appeals here in Kentucky. But the Sixth Circuit, our circuit, Michigan, Ohio, Kentucky, and Tennessee, sits in Cincinnati. And that is the Potter Stewart Courthouse building that sits in Cincinnati right by the Fountain Square Mall. So next time you're in Cincinnati at the Fountain Square Mall, look across the street and you will see our Sixth Circuit Federal Court of Appeals. I actually was there a couple years ago to watch a case against No Child Left Behind brought by a district in Michigan. It was quite interesting to see an en banc court listen to that case and ultimately decide in favor of the federal government in that case. Next question. So if the 11th Circuit now rendered a decision saying that corporal punishment was unconstitutional, every state must follow that decision. Right, I hope you came up with false. It's only the states that are in that same circuit. So for the 11th, it's Alabama, Georgia, and Florida would have to follow that actual decision. All of the rest of the states in the country would not have to follow the 11th circuit's decisions. Which circuit would we have to follow? The sixth, of course. And then we are left with one additional question. So what is the court that everyone has to follow? Of course the U.S. Supreme Court. So that Supreme Court, those decisions are reviewed and either approved or denied by Congress, right? Nope. The Supreme Court decisions are the supreme law of the land here in the United States. There is no review at all of Supreme Court decisions. That's why the Supreme Court is so important. So the Supreme Court actually even has the power over Congress. So it can declare acts of Congress unconstitutional, meaning they don't fit with our constitution and therefore invalidate the law that Congress has passed. So they are an extremely important body and they have lifetime tenure. So it is really one of the most prestigious and most powerful jobs on the planet and it's arguable even that some supreme court justices have had more impact on the united states than many u.s presidents so it is that kind of important so when they're talking about new supreme court justices it's worth paying attention to and certainly electing a president has a big impact so that's definitely one reason to vote in presidential elections is they get to set the supreme court so talking of our Supreme Court, currently has five justices, right? Okay, good. Hopefully you're doing some quick counting. No, let's go with nine. Harder question. Can you name them? All right, let's start in the middle. That's Chief Justice John Roberts. Then Elena Kagan is the shorter lady on the back row. Justice Alito is the tallest fellow. Justice Scalia is the person uh, just to Justice Roberts Wright, um, the older white Italian gentleman. Uh, Justice Kennedy is the gentleman sitting on the other side of the Chief Justice. Justice Thomas is the black gentleman on the far left. And Justice Sotomayor is the other woman standing in the back. And Justice Ginsburg is the lady sitting in the chair and Justice Stephen Breyer is the shorter of the two gentlemen on the back row. That is our current Supreme Court. I would expect a bit of change in the next couple of years. All right, that's enough of these types of questions. You can go look at the structure of government flowchart and that's all we're gonna talk about legal framework. It's gonna keep coming up throughout this semester and so I want you to keep paying attention to it. It's literally what runs the country, right? This legal framework is like the functional infrastructure of the United States of America. So it's probably worth knowing. Thanks for listening.